Hello, today we're going to continue talking about graphing in standard form. This time the equations have something that's just slightly harder than yesterday. So this time we have a number in front of the x squared, which isn't really that much harder. It's just one more little thing to make sure that you evaluate correctly. Okay, so we're going to find the axis of symmetry first by going x equals negative b over 2a. And remember, b is in front of the x, so the opposite of positive 4 is negative 4. And then you're always going to have 2 times whatever is in front of the x squared. And so this ends up equaling negative 4 divided by 4, which is negative 1. And you're going to immediately put that into this space. And what you're going to do is that will tell you what the vertex is once you evaluate it. Now let's graph just our axis of symmetry. Negative 1. Oops, goes right here. And visually this can help you realize what numbers you want to use. So I'd probably use the numbers just right next to it. So 0 and then 1. So we're going to put 0 here and 1 here. Whenever 0 is close, that's a really great one to use because it actually is very, very fast to evaluate, and you'll see why in a second. So 2x squared plus 4x plus 1. That is our expression that shows us what y equals. And so we've got 2 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 plus 1. You're basically plugging that negative 1 wherever you see an x. And at this stage, I want you to go ahead and square whatever you have to square. So we've got negative 1 times negative 1 becomes positive 1. And then when you get to the next row, 2 times 1 is 2. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And then you just recopy the plus 1. And then you're always going to just subtract or add whatever you have first. So 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Plus 1 is negative 1. And I'm just going to graph them all at the end. Let's go ahead and just evaluate the next one. Now this is a bonus one. It's super fun because it's so fast. 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus 1. Bonus, 0 plus 0 plus 1 equals 1. And now we've got 1 right here. So we've got 2 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1 plus 1. So 1 squared is just 1, right? So now 2 times 1 is 2. 4 times 1 is 4. And then you've still got your plus 1. 2 plus 4 is 6. Plus 1 is 7. So let's graph each of these. I guess it might help. I'm going to list the ordered pairs really quick. So this is your input, and this is your output. So it's going to be input of negative 1, output of negative 1. And then next we have 0, 1, and then 1, 7. All right, let's graph this. So negative 1, negative 1 right here. 0 means you don't go left to right at all, but you go up 1, and then over 1 to the right, up 7. Put the dot. Okay, now we're going to reflect. So we know that this is a mirror image, so if this is 2 away, then it's going to be 2 away on the other side. And then if this one is 1 away, it's going to be 1 away on the other side. And now we've got our parabola shape. This one's a little bit difficult to make a curve at the bottom because it is very narrow. But just do your best to kind of make it look rounded a little bit at the bottom. And then go back up. Okay, we've just got one example left. We already did one yesterday. And now we'll do number two. Okay, axis of symmetry. So you're probably getting used to this formula by now. x equals negative b over 2a. The opposite of negative 8 is positive 8. And this time we have 2 times negative 2. OK, do your multiplying. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And 8 divided by negative 4 is negative 2. And we're just going to take that directly to right here. And we're going to take this expression and put it right here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and draw our axis of symmetry. It helps us visualize which numbers to use. So negative 2 is here. So we probably want to use whatever number this is, which is negative 1. 
and the zero. Okay, so negative one and zero. And we're gonna substitute this directly in. So we've got negative two, and instead of x squared, we now put negative two squared. And then, actually we should probably put that on the outside of the parentheses. Okay, and then minus eight times negative two plus two. And just do the squared part, <coughs> excuse me, right away. And you get four. <coughs> and then negative two times positive four is negative eight. And then think of this as negative eight times negative two, which will be positive 16. So you can see the calculations are a little bit more tricky this time. Negative eight plus 16 is positive eight. Then eight plus two is 10. Okay, we're gonna do that same thing, but this time with negative one. So we've got negative one squared minus eight times negative one plus two. Negative one squared, I'm just gonna do that right now, which makes it positive. Negative two times positive one is negative two. Negative eight times negative one is positive eight. And then plus two. It's really easy to make mistakes. In just a second, in just a second when we graph, I'll show you something to look for that can help you eliminate some mistakes. So negative two plus eight is positive six, and six plus two is eight. Woohoo, bonus, we've got a zero to graph. So negative two times zero squared minus eight times zero plus two, this becomes zero, this becomes zero, and then when you add two to nothing, you get two. Okay, let's graph this. So we've got negative two, 10, which means to the left two and up 10. And then we have negative one to the left, and then eight going up. Zero means don't go left or right at all, but go up two. And now we're gonna reflect, and there is one thing I wanted to point out. Let's say that you're graphing, and let's just pretend that this one, instead of being here, it turned out like way crazy over here. If you have something that doesn't make sense, because we know in general that it should be a parabola making some kind of shape kind of like this, right? So if you get something that doesn't make sense, I want you to double check your math because it probably means that you made one small mistake somewhere. And so if you see that it makes kind of a general U shape, this one is right here, then you know that you most likely graphed it correct correctly. Okay, so this one's one away, so we'll put a dot here. And this one is two away, so we'll put a dot right here. Now let's graph it. Make sure you do kind of like a little curve. It's hard because it's pretty narrow. All right, that's it for today. Good luck with the work, and message me if you want to go over anything on the homework. Talk to you later. Bye.